Welcome to the next episode of Let's Talk. It's the third one I've done. Now, we've been changing things as we've been going with this series, this thing I've done three weeks in a row. We're improving and getting better. We're bringing different topics to the table every time. And overall, I think each episode has been better. But with last time, with the last week's episode, I actually did try something new in terms of layout and visuals. And I definitely liked the idea behind it, but it needed improvement. So this time we have a new layout, or rather it's an updated version of the previous one that should look a little bit better. You'll have to let me know your thoughts. We've got a few topics to discuss today. Uh, a couple of main ones would be having my old WoW account back, which I lost. And that's five years worth of game time. I lost and I managed to get it back and I'll be talking about that, showing you some stuff to do with that. Uh, a little bit of a follow up, some previous topics like, uh, for example, we talked about exercise last time. It's been a week. I'll tell you what I've been doing and sort of my progress with that. Um, we also have Neo, which looks to be the next Dark Souls S game that's going to be really good and relevant. I'll be showing you some trailers from that. You can make your own opinion. I'm very excited about that game. Looking forward to talking about that. Uh, we also have a little bit of talk, I'm sure, about things like uh, the Facebook that I set up recently, um, you know, with what I do on Twitter, a little bit about Rare Drop, uh, future plans with Patreon, and there's also a little story that came up to do with Overwatch about a real-life diva, 17-year-old Asian um, lovely lady who's very talented at Overwatch. Uh, we'll talk about that later. It's pretty cool. And also, uh, Overwatch did get ranked. So I'll be talking about that too. Lots to discuss today. And of course, you know, I do bring my own topics to the table with Let's Talk, but that's not all Let's Talk is about. You guys bring your own discussions, your own questions, and if it's relevant or good or whatever, I'll bring it up. We'll talk about it. We have a discussion. It's not always just what I bring to the table. It's a back and forth, and that's what I really like about doing this. This man. is the updated version of the previous layout. I hope it's a little bit better for you. Uh, we're back on the major man himself, the gooby dwarf. We'll have to give him a new hairstyle and beard, because apparently that's a theme we're doing. Explain the new layout. Quite simply, it's Smaller webcam, because it's not that big of a deal, I think. The gameplay is a lot bigger. You'll notice that it's not as small as it was. We have some borders now. Chat is smaller, but less, like, stretched. And it's zoomed in a little bit, so what people are saying, you can actually see, you know. The text is bigger, so that's great as well. I've also repositioned a few things, like the donation sub box popping up no longer covers anything. Everything sort of has its own place and spot I think it's definitely better sure I could probably improve it even more and I probably will do but this is a nice uh, step forward I think for the the layout and the visuals of let's talk so you'll have to let me know what you think and uh, any feedback any advice always open to it guys let's begin today's let's talk with some heirlooms now I've gotten the first two episodes without using any heirlooms at all it's time to speed up this process a little bit and create some sick armor for the Gooby Dwarf. Here we go. See what this looks like. And the new gun. It's a double barrel shotgun. Oh god, that chest piece. No. No, that chest piece is hideous. Holy shit. Oh my god. I had no idea it was that ugly. I would have prepared a transmog. Oh, God, it's horrible. My health has doubled instantly. My damage will be out of this fucking world outrageous now. I like the double barrel shotgun, but... Oh, my God, everything else is hideous. I suppose this is why people are transmogging. You can transmog heirlooms, right? You can make it look cool. Oh, God, the chest piece is fucking disgraceful, dude. How is your lad of a rabbit smudge? Oh, he's doing great. He's got so, like bouncy and friendly recently he's been getting better with us like petting him and you know actually like being comfortable around us which is so great so basically the things that i just put on these heirlooms what they are is they're like powered up items now they grow with you and they'll help you level all the way to a certain point so a couple of them will only take me to 68 one of them will take me to 90 there's a difference there but it doesn't matter right now basically the idea is every time i level up 
these level with me so it'll give me more stamina critical strike agility as i level up for wearing these right now i'm getting 35 percent increased xp just for having them on on everything i do so it basically allows you to level quicker because you're doing more damage and you're also actually getting more xp for what you do compared to others oh i mean i mean this is also a pretty good choice for the Dwarf Hunter. It's even got like a little like uh, roof on it, man. It's adorable. What do you think? It does a little like slapping on the ground. It's so cute. This is what we're going to ride around on. It's just so cute. It's just hilariously cute. <laughs> right, get rid of the UI here. We'll go for an RP run. <laughs> Gooby Bear's desperately trying to keep up. He's doing a pretty good job. Smudge was actually on the bed for the first time ever in the new house. We've had him on our bed a couple of times back in my parents' house. Um, but since we moved, we just never had him on the bed. And we had him on the bed like two days ago for the first time ever. And uh, I don't know, he was really okay with it. He was just really floppy like a pancake. And just let Linny stroke the hell out of him. At the time, I couldn't stroke him as much as I wanted to. I was holding... And I'm not kidding, I was holding two pieces of uh, metal armor in my hands that were covered in oil that I was looking for some sort of rag to wipe down and like press into the metal so that it doesn't rust in the future. That's literally what I was doing when I encountered Smudge on our bed for the first time. Uh, so I couldn't pet him at all because my hands were uh, covered in oil and kind of holding metal armor. It's pretty weird. That same day, I uh, had literally used a Tiger Tooth Karambit to cut open a box containing real armor. And you know what? I'm living the fucking dream. I think I'm living the fucking dream. Yeah, probably been asked this already, but where did Rust go? I've not actually explained that. Um, Rust is a fun game, but as a YouTube series, I like to have progression and kind of a story, right? I like it to progress. I like to have a base. The base gets bigger, better, bigger, better, bigger, better in each new episode. We get better weapons, we meet new people, we make friends, we make enemies, and we have an end game goal. That's the best way to have a series, in my opinion. And the issue with Rust is that it fucking resets constantly. Too much. Way too much. And it got to the point where I just couldn't keep doing it. I'd have to spend, like, more and more time just to get to where I was on my new server, having lost all my progress every bloody time I sat down to play the game. It was infuriating and not good for a series. So, uh, I kind of moved on from it, I think, and then recorded, but... What we're trying to do, I'm sure Aaron explained this, yeah. is we're trying to get enough content to launch with. Yeah, exactly. Which is hard when we're, everyone's quite busy. Um, yeah, we're all doing our own stuff mostly like we all work some sort of thing full time yeah. all of us once we have like the first few things done and like made yeah, and loaded then from rolls. then it rolls smoothly but smoothly instead of just like all at once it'll be a sneaky peeky thing sneaky peeky thing. it's kind of like what we have to do when we go on holiday me and josh is do a like how far we're going away yeah. say we go away for a week we have to do a week's worth of work while working for a yeah, week exactly. so it's insane so what um, what's happening now for Rare Drop is we need to do like multiple weeks worth of, of stuff upon starting, Here and then from there it's easy. Okay. There will we be go. a D and D series on the Rare Drop channel. Yep. Um, and that is going to drop in September, mainly. But I wanted to get some stuff out for it earlier than September. But our DM is busy until September, sadly, and our DM is a member of Rare Drop. Um, so I wanted to do a prologue campaign, uh, just sort of an introduction or yeah, anything. Yeah, just a one-off session that I'm like, run about four or five hours long. Gonna cut that down into a couple of episodes. Yeah, and then we'll do that as a stream so everyone can watch and stuff. Um, and the main reason I want that to happen before September is so it's all set up. Is all set up, but mainly because our cosplay at Eurogamer. Is as our D&D Is those characters. characters, yeah. yeah. And if we haven't launched it, it feels a little bit fucking stupid. Yeah. We'll be literally, like, walking around EGX as our own, like, 
original yeah. characters. <laughs> like, uh, it's yeah, gonna be so tough. But at least this way we can like. But like the, the the cool thing about it is like, let's say we go to EGX in a week and we have our costumes now somehow it's all done and ready yeah. we go we're just random D, &D characters yeah. we go at Saint september and we've already launched a series and you guys all know these characters then you literally fine. see those characters in person and we could, which and will we'll, be really cool and we'll be acting as them as well because we'll be having some fun yeah yeah so um but that's that's something gonna be a really cool so if anyone idea. has any experience dming pathfinder i can see a couple of people responding just email me at askfluke at gmail.com or you can tweet him or you can tweet me. Tweet me as well. I do like Twitter. I'm always on that. Anyway, shit. yeah. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Aaron talks. Goodbye. Follow talks. It's, it's it? called Let's Talk. Let's Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all. Oh Bye. my God. I have some amazing news. Uh, really good news for me, actually. I have actually played this game for a very long time. On and off since vanilla, but I mainly started at the beginning of Wrath. Like, I did play in Burning Crusade, I did play in vanilla, but I never had an actual max level character that I raided and played and PvP'd and stuff. Genuinely played. So, in that aspect, I started in Wrath of the Lich King. And I can't remember what year that was. Does anyone know when Wrath of the Lich King came out? I dedicated my life to these characters. I leveled them to max level. I raided for the first time. I did PvP for the first time. I made long-lasting friendships. I learned a lot about myself. Being a guild master, being a raid leader, it built my confidence as I was growing up. Amazingly, it did actually. Um, late 2008. Wow, God, that's even earlier than I thought it was. Yeah, so I've been playing the game sort of properly since 2008. It's a long time. That's eight years. Jesus Christ. I've been playing this game for on and off properly for like eight years. God. And my main account... I actually played it for about six years. And the reason that I stopped playing on that account and moved to this account is because I took a two year break or so, like the longest break I've ever taken from World of Warcraft. I took that break. And during that time, my account was compromised. And it was then, who knows, something happened to it. And when I tried to log on at the end of Mr. Pandaria, when I finally came back to the game, it told me my account did not exist. And I thought at that moment, based on it saying, account does not exist, my account had been deleted. And I'd lost six years of progress and life investment. And I was really fucking sad. But I wanted to play WoW and I wanted to play with my friends. So I, I made a new account. I made a new Battle.net. I made a new account. And I just dealt with it. And this is that account. And I believe I was playing a warlock. There he is, Jaraxxus. Of course he's called Jaraxxus, fucking shit name. Still a, a great song though, and a great demon, great demon. Um, yeah, so I played this guy and got him to max level, played through a mop, and I was still really sad. I lost all my progress, all my mounts, all my achievements, all of my history, all of my friends, all of my characters that I dedicated so much of my life to. I lost them all. And it was really fucking sad. I was really upset. But I dealt with it and I played and whatever. And eventually, you know, we moved on from this character. And I we went to Kazakh um, in Warlords of Drenor. I made Droxar and he was my main. And I raided a lot through him and made a lot of good friends and whatnot. Played with Rage and Gubiak. It was a good experience. And then we took another break from WoW and we came back again. And I made an alliance character in prep for Legion because I wanted to play a Night Elf Demon Hunter. So that's what I'll be doing in Legion, Night Elf Demon Hunter. And so I played a Paladin in the meantime. Right now I'm learning to tank on him and that's why my character doesn't look amazing right now. The transmog's like unfinished, but we're almost there. And that's what I've been doing with WoW on this account. But I did lose everything. And the other day, about five days ago, I think it was, I decided... No, there's a way. There must be a way. I learned that if you've got an old account or a family member quits the game or something like that, then you can convert that account and attach it to yours and like merge it basically. Which means if I could get my old account back, my six years of life account, if I can get that back, then I get all of my characters back. I get all of my achievements, all my mounts, this, this progress, all this time that I spent on these characters. 
I get it back and that nostalgia, it was worth it to try. So I contacted a, uh, a GM and I got a ticket going through, went in a live chat and whatever, and I found out that they could revert the account. What happened is apparently someone had got on my account, compromised it in some way, they froze it, and the guy had changed the email. So even though the account wasn't deleted and that it did exist, it said it didn't exist because they changed the email it was associated with. But because I could prove who I was with ID and all that shit, right, they uh, realized it was me, reverted it, gave it back to me, merged it to my account, and I got all of my mounts and all of my achievements back, which was amazing, right? I was so fucking happy. And yes, one of these characters is Mage Wizard. Okay, so I guess I'll go for my journey of WoW then, and we'll start where it began in Wrath of the Lich King on Chamber of Aspects. My Blood Elf Death Knight, the origin, this character is literally the origins of Hollow. Like, this is like why I am known on the internet as Hollow is because I was thinking of a Death Knight name that would suit a Death Knight. The really emo and stuff. So I called him Hollow. And then people started calling me Hollow because my character name was that. And that went on for years. And eventually I just, it stuck. And I made a YouTube account and it was called Hollow, Generation Hollow. This is the origins of that name. This character is the reason I have that name. God damn, dude, and I got him back, and I'm so insanely happy to be able to say that. I lost this guy for two years. He, this guy's like years of my life. This guy is my me, age 15 to like 16 and a half or so. Um, and I made some long-lasting friends. And this is the fucking character in the same gear I was wearing when I first started interacting with Josh, Rage. He first met me through hearing I played WoW. And he came up to me one day in the middle of high school when I was eating my lunch and said, hey, I heard you play WoW. And that's led me to where I am now, man. This character. We ended up enjoying the fuck out of my time on this character. And then I met Josh and we talked about WoW and my time as a hardcore raider was coming it to an end. I was kind of done with it. I was moving on from it. Um, it wasn't something I wanted to do anymore. And Rage, he was actually in a guild that was way more casual, that raided like two times a week or something, and their progress was nowhere near as good, which was lame. But I wanted to change and try a new style of the game, which was more laid back. And so I said, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll make a character on your realm, and I'll play on your realm. And I, it was a Tauren Shaman, I believe, and I think it was on Killrog. There it is. War totems, man. War totems. <laughs> He's still in his same shitty gear from when I left him. This is the character that I first started playing WoW with Rage on. I was playing Resto Shaman very reluctantly. Hated it because I was made to play a spec. I didn't want to, to help the raid. And eventually I got sick of it and said, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, I want to play a different class because I don't like playing Resto Shaman. I started to play on a new character, and he was a paladin, he was a blood elf paladin, and this guy, though the original Hollow, Shaw, has more impact to me and, and more like history to him, this character was most of my raiding experience and game time with Rage, like this is how we became really good friends. And now he's not a blood elf paladin, we moved to Alliance to do some PvP at one point, I forgot we did that, but he changed from a Blood Elf and he changed to, um, obviously, a Draenei. And this is what he looks like. And he had some pretty good gear. We were, at a very, we were in a new guild that was a different guild, not casual, not hardcore, somewhere in between, you know, hardcore mentality, but with like a raiding three days a week kind of thing going on. And we played the shit out of these characters. He was playing his warrior Rage Reaver, which is the origins of his name, by the way. Um, and I was playing Hollow, uh, my paladin, and just smashing through all of Wrath of Lich King. We did Ulduar, we did... Um, Trial of the Champions when it came out. We did the motherfucking Ice Crown you Citadel say. defeating the badass himself, the Lich King, on this character, man. Yeah, I know. Trollo the Death Knight. Who knows what the fuck this character is? I feel like deleting it right now, but 
I don't know. I don't want to delete any of them. They're just it's stupid. It's stupid. The, these names, man. Twitch the Rogue as well. Some of these names are really embarrassing and bad. Just you wait. Just you wait. But eventually I kind of said, actually, I miss the Death Knight. I miss playing as a Death Knight. There he is. There he is. Cataclysm came out and I, I was playing this character, but I actually made him in Wrath, I think. Um, this is the fucking OG, man. This is my, my main Death Knight. Like, sure, I had an original Death Knight, but this is the one. This is the one that I spent the most time on. I did PvP on this character. This is the guy that I got to 2000... Oh, it was painful. God, I forgot that. I got to 2,197 rated. I was free rating away from 2.2k on this character. This is the character that I did PvP on. And uh, obviously I played him in Cataclysm being that he's 85 and has Cataclysm gear on. But it was back in Wrath when I got to 2.2k basically. Uh, and I did that with Rage and a guy called Erbium. Who some of you OG viewers might remember him. God, that was a long time, dude. This is my cow. <laughs> Solid name, guys. Chubbs the Death Knight. For some reason, Chubbs is tiny, by the way. Check out This Is My Cow. Chubbs is tiny. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, um, this is the PvP character, dude. Before we got to Cataclysm and, and leveled into PvP then, it's back to Killrog. I recently told the story of Mage Wizard on a challenge episode. Uh, episode 4, I believe it was. It went out recently. So most of you should know the story of this character. But it's sort of an homage and a reference to the guy who made me play WoW properly for the first time. Harry, the original Maze Wizard. And in his honor, I made a new Maze Wizard and uh, took up the shitty mantle. <laughs> God damn, dude. Also, at some point, I PvP'd on a Warlock. This is it, dude. This is the character. This is the character. Me and Rage first started PvPing together on his Elemental Shaman and my... Destro Warlock and we got to 1550 rated in twos as an elemental shaman and a Destro Warlock and our whole strategy was walk out of the arena and shoot a chaos bolt and a fucking lava burst at a target and then they would die or we would lose the arena and we actually won a lot of arenas doing that shitty tactic just walking out bursting someone down and winning and that was how we would win. And we got to 15-15 rated. It was shit. We were shit. But I remember, and I will never forget that, before we actually started doing proper PvP and played on the Death Knight and the Warrior and whatnot. Okay, here's a question, right? Here's a question. Why? Why do I have a character that is a rogue? A level 85 rogue. Why is that confusing? Why is it confusing that I have a level 85 rogue for PvP? Well, because I have this level 85 rogue for PvP, I also have this level 85 rogue for PvP in Cataclysm. I have no idea. I don't- I barely remember this character. I barely remember this character. I have a PvP character, PvP rogue, in Cataclysm on Horde and Alliance. Apparently at one point, I really enjoyed rogues. I don't know why, though, but, I mean, they're really fun, sure. But I have one now! I have one on my current account! Nearly level 100, it's 98. I have three rogues, dude! Why? But there you go. <laughs> I have a lot of rogues. Also, here's my druid, morph. There you go. <laughs> uh, obvious druid name, because he's... He changes form, not that big of a deal. Played him for uh, in Cataclysm, he wasn't really a big deal. Did do a bit of PvP on him, but mostly this was my gatherer character. He would mine, and he would herb, and he would generate income for my mains, basically. Here's one for you. I'm gonna show you the most vanilla thing you'll ever see. My first character in vanilla WoW. Are you ready to see him? I've left him at the same level since... 2005 or 2006 this was my first main character in vanilla wow back in the original days of wow peasy <sighs> you may remember my original youtube name as well 
Look at him. <laughs> He's so vanilla. This guy is literally vanilla in like a, a physical form. <laughs> He's hideous. He's even got the chain link fucking helm. Oh my god, it was so slow, the leveling back then. It was horrible. Oh my god, the nostalgia. Also, check this name out. Pocket Peasy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the, the level 8 Warlock Gnome. Pocket Peasy. <laughs> I, probably, I, was, I bet I was so proud of this shitty name. Contracts, the, the rogue. Didn't I have another one? Contracts the rogue. <laughs> I have so many rogues. I have so many rogues. <sighs> Pocket Peasy is the handheld version. Yeah, yeah. Dude, do you see what? why I'm so happy to have this account back? Just looking at the characters. Me and Josh looked for them and remembered everything we did. It is history for me looking at these characters. Why I bring this up is um, I kind of need to... I kind of need to choose which characters to transfer. So what it costs, it costs £17. How bullshit is this? It costs £17 to transfer a character from one account to another. So I need to be really efficient to save as much money as possible. So what I planned on doing was picking the highest level classes and just bringing them over. So as sad as it is... I will not be bringing over the original Hollow. He will stay here on this account in the past where I won't be playing him. And he'll stay there, level 80 forever, in his same gear from when I raided and when I first played the game, when I made all of my longtime friends. He'll stay there. And I'll be bringing a different Death Knight. I'll be bringing the PvP Death Knight over to my realm to play on in the future. This Hollow. This will be the one that I bring. They originally told me that they weren't going to do a discount or um, any like... Well, they weren't going to do anything. They weren't going to do anything for me. They just said, okay, we've got your old account. We've merged it. You've got your old mounts and achievements. That's it. And I said, no, no, I want these characters. I want these characters on my current account. Obviously. And so they said, okay, we'll use the paid service. And I was like, no way. Because of your security issues and the reason that I lost my account originally and how it told me my account was deleted when it wasn't, I bought another battle net. I bought your game and all of the expansions and invested time again and lost everything because your security failed and your website told me my account didn't exist when it did. So that's on them. So they originally said to me, okay, well, if you're going to transfer five characters, we'll let you transfer one for free. Aren't we just so kind? And I was like, that's not good enough. I'm not going to accept that. We're not going to leave this conversation until I get a better deal. Um, and thankfully, the guy was nice and he managed to say, okay, well, how about three characters you pay for and two you get for free. We'll transfer one for free now and when you transfer the next, the free that you want to transfer, we'll give you another one for free after that. How it worked out in the end is I have to pay for free transfers and they gave me a level 100 boost. So if they'd not done that, I probably would have just uh, taken Mage Wizard over as well because that way I have a Warlock on my account. Uh, let's work it out. What do I have? On my current account, I have Paladin, Warrior, Rogue, oh, and a Warlock. So that's four classes. So we need anything that isn't those. So we already have a Warlock. We don't have a Mage. But what I do have on my current account is a Mage that I was willing to level from 1 to 60. And then I could maybe boost that instead of bringing this one. And then I'd have an Alliance Mage instead of a Horde Mage, which would be more convenient to me uh, with my current setup. Uh, so I was thinking about doing that using my level 100 boost on a Mage that I level to 60, basically, is the idea. I don't need the warrior. So we bring over the shaman, the death knight, and we bring over the druid. So that's free transfers. Then I still have a level 100 boost, like up my sleeve, to boost whatever I want, which will probably be the mage. So just thought I'd share that with you. You know, these are the characters that I lost. These are the OG characters. This is six years of my life I'm looking at with tons of memories sort of linked to them. And to get it back was so fucking lovely and to transfer them to my current account and be able to play these characters finally once again i'm thrilled and fucking excited to do the fact that i shared the mage wizard story recently 
Um, and then seeing you all go crazy when you saw Mage Wizard pop up in the character list, when you saw the original Hollow, when you saw Peasy, the vanilla WoW character, you know, I could see the excitement and it just reminded me how fucking fun it is to be doing what I do and share something awesome with you guys and see that enthusiasm as well. It's great, man. It's so great. Let's talk about Neo. So, Neo looks to be a follow-up to Dark Souls in a way. Now, From Software has announced that Dark Souls is done now. 1, 2, and 3, Dark Souls ends. That means there's still a very good chance that we'll see something like Bloodborne 2. There's a very good chance we'll see a Soulsborne-esque game in a different world. For example, Demon Souls isn't in the same world as Dark Souls. You know, you never know. We could see Demon Souls 2. It doesn't mean that they're going to stop making games like that. It just means the story of Dark Souls is complete. And so they're moving into other things. But the thing is, we're going to have to wait some time for anything like that. But what looks really good and what I'm very happy and excited about is the fact that Neo exists. Neo looks like a Dark Souls-esque game combined with Ninja Gaiden. In fact, one of the main guys behind Ninja Gaiden is working on Neo and is heavily inspired by Dark Souls. So let's watch the trailers together right now and uh, we'll form an opinion. See if you guys like the look of it. See what we think of the game. Already really creepy. Is that Geralt? <laughs> Oh, he took his weapon out of his hands. That was a sick parry. What is that? Fucking Pokemon level shit. And there you go, that's the gameplay trailer. So what it looks like, and someone actually said it, it does look very similar to Devil May Cry in some aspects. Um, it has Dark Souls combat. It has that PvP, PvE world. And it seems like you're a sort of demon hunter, basically, in feudal Japan with Dark Souls-esque mechanics and combat. All I can say when I see the gameplay of this game and the trailer and all that is that it looks good. Now... Bloodborne is very different to Dark Souls. The story, the gameplay, the world is different. But it still has that core mechanic or core to it that reminds you of Dark Souls that you can still enjoy and you can swap between the two types of games very easily. To me, this game looks like almost like From Software's next step. I know it's not From Software that made it, but you know how we're talking about how From Software are going to do, be doing some new things, but they may not necessarily leave that Blood Souls type of gameplay, right? This feels like From Software could easily be behind this game. They're not, but it could be like their next step into a different style of game where they step into feudal Japan and demon hunting and that kind of thing. But it's not by From Software. It's by a completely different team, Team Ninja. Um, so it could be great. In terms of concept and how it looks, it looks great. But because it's not not from software, they could easily fuck it up. They've not done it before. From software have so much experience with making these types of games. We have no idea if they're going to be able to pull it off. 
But I tell you what, I'm going to do my best to contact them and see if I can play the game soon and maybe get my own opinion on it. If I could play the game before it was released, I would be fucking thrilled. But looking at it right now, I can easily say... I'm hyped. So will Lawbite be a mixture of funny and serious videos? What was the response to the Zenyatta video like? Basically, what it seems like, Mod, is um, people like the silly style a lot. I had like maybe five people out of a hundred or so, let's say, um, say they'd like the videos to be a bit more serious on the silly style. There's a few people always asking for more serious style than the silly style. And then when I did this more serious style, a lot of people said they missed the silly style. So what I need to do basically is somewhere in between. I need I need um I need to do somewhere in between those two styles. A bit more silly than before. But also a bit more serious the, um, than before. The real life diva thing that happened. There's um this Asian chick, I think she's 17 years old. She's a pro overwatch player on a pro overwatch team something like that and basically she's really good at the game really good at the game just like diva would be you know she's a pro gamer her lore is she's a pro gamer now she runs a mech and fights the evil of the world as part of overwatch i guess um but yeah she She's like a 17-year-old Asian pro gamer, just like kind of similar to D.Va, but D.Va's like 19, right? Um, and she's really good at Overwatch. She's pro, obviously, but the thing about it is she's so good that other pro heart Overwatch players started saying she's a cheater. Like, there's no way she's that good at the game. She's no way that she's that good at the game and that she has to be cheating and that they actually started making bets that they'd quit Overwatch. They'd stop playing Overwatch professionally if it was proved that she wasn't cheating. They were that convinced. And some of them were absolutely just, like, dreadful. I think one of them was saying, like, horrible things to her every day and regularly or something. And some other fucking idiot pro Overwatch player, he was saying that if it was proved that she wasn't cheating, that he would attack her with a knife or something, like he'd kill her. He was actually, like, death-threatening her or something. Fucking outrageous. These pro Overwatch players were just awful to this girl because she was good at the game. And they assumed that she was cheating. And they started calling her out on it, making bets, saying they'd quit the game if she wasn't cheating. Making death threats, just being fucking horrendous. They're also sort of besmirching the, the team, weren't they? Ultimately, you know, if you've got a guy on, well, girl, I guess, player, let's say that. If you've got a player on your team who is being accused of being a cheater, then it's a bad thing for your team because it also calls into question your team members. Like, maybe they're cheating. It was actually becoming a big problem. And so they made a bet that if she didn't, if she recorded herself showing her hands moving on the mouse and like, showing that she's actually playing the game and proving that it is her playing and proving that it isn't her cheating and she's not cheating, then they would quit Overwatch and quit the Overwatch professional scene. So this was like a huge, ridiculous thing to be doing. Like, if you're making death threats to anyone, you're a fucking idiot, full stop. Um, but like harassing someone in the pro scene, it just like, it's terrible. It's like, it puts a bad light on, on esports as a whole. You just make us look like fucking idiots. You make it seem immature and you bring it down to a level we shouldn't be at. Um, irrelevant of whether she was cheating or not. But anyway, so she goes ahead and she does it. She fucking reams their team and, and shows that she's not fucking cheating. Shock horror. She's actually just a really good player. Um, and they both, fair enough, they stick to their word. These two people that said they'd quit the game and quit pro Overwatch, they actually did. They actually did quit Overwatch and quit the professional scene. They stuck to their word. So I guess props to them on that one. But like, how fucking dumb is it? to even risk your career based on what someone else is doing. How dumb was that? And the death threats as well. I think the guy apologized. I'm not 100%. I think he apologized and said he shouldn't have done that. And generally, they were quite good about it. Like, obviously, most people probably wouldn't have quit 
pro scene even after they said they would after a bet like that but they did so props to them for that but they also apologized profusely i think and uh blizzard actually contacted the team to i think they apologized as well that it happened to them and uh put out a statement that she wasn't cheating and shit but this was all um something that we didn't really know about really because it's not like in our faces it's um an asian team it's asian overwatch you know this isn't something that's at the forefront and pro overwatch isn't necessarily a big thing right now it's growing definitely there was like a overwatch invitational that some twitch streamer hosted i think it's called josh og he did like a 25k dollar thing or something but there's no actual big thing going on yet with overwatch there's no designated thing like blizzard isn't uh hosting anything yet maybe they'll start doing it at like blizzcons and stuff they did do some half stone tournaments and whatnot that kicked off half stone in a big way so maybe they'll start doing stuff like that correct me if i'm wrong but uh yeah um it's kind of fucked up that it happened and it, it it does put a bad light on esports but on the bright side they did again follow through with their word and they did quit and yeah, someone just said that their, their entire team ended up disbanding over it. And I don't blame them. It was probably the right thing to do. To just get away from that name, that team, and that whole situation for the players who weren't accusing her and the players who weren't a part of that bet. Just to get away from that team name. I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't blame them at all. But I don't know. Pro Overwatch, it might start become, becoming more of a relevant, real thing in the near future. Um, have any of you actually like watched any pro overwatch i've only glanced at it when i was looking at that tournament i was just speaking about the streamer one the josh og one um and i saw some really cool things like i've seen a clip uh, that josh sent me of a widow maker that's using her grappling hook to sort of slingshot herself into the air over an area where you're not supposed to be able to get to, like, you know, rooftops that make you slide off because you're not allowed to stand on them. She slingshotted herself into the air, and while flying through the fucking air, shot someone in the face, instantly killing someone, landed, killed another person, slingshotted herself back up, killed another person, and it, like, reamed the enemy team. It was really fucking cool, and I wasn't expecting really high-level cool things to get me excited and hyped. I think Overwatch is in a quite a nice place right now. And with um, eSports Overwatch becoming more relevant, especially with this whole diva thing that happened, are you interested in it? Are you going to look into it? Are you thinking of maybe having a watch, like out of those of you who are playing the game? Guys, thank you so much for watching today's Let's Talk. I hope you enjoyed it. I think the... Um, the visuals are a lot better this time. Let me know what you think. Uh, obviously, there'll be a YouTube video of this as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the topics. If you have any suggestions for topics for next time, do let me know. We'll see you next week, Mr. Gooby Dwarf, level 28. Doing pretty good. All right, guys. Have a good night, and I will see you next time. It was a nice time tonight, guys. Really, really enjoyed it.